Today I'm going to make a classic red velvet birthday cake. It's going to be a simple design, but special enough to make someone's day. I'm going to be making the cake layers, and while that's baking, I'll be making the cream cheese frosting. After all that's done, I'll assemble all the layers and frosting for a completed four layer birthday cake. I'm going to start by combining the dry ingredients for the cake. It's really important that the dry ingredients are well combined and also sifted. The flour used is cake flour and I recommend not substituting in all-purpose flour. It will result in a different texture than you want. I'm using Dutch process cocoa powder here, but you could use whatever cocoa powder you have. If you want slightly less chocolate flavor, you can decrease the cocoa powder to two tablespoons. Now I'm going to work on the batter. Combine the sugar, vegetable oil, and butter in a mixing bowl. Make sure the butter is at room temperature so that it mixes well with the other ingredients. I'm going to let this combine into an emulsion for 5 minutes or so. The mixture should look homogeneous and well combined. Then I will add in room temperature eggs, one at a time. After each egg, make sure that the batter is well combined. Add about one tablespoon of red gel food coloring to the batter. If you're using regular food coloring that is more watery, I would double that. Add in your vanilla extract. I'm going to add in the dry ingredients and buttermilk now. Add these in small portions, alternating as you go. I'm doing three portions of the dry ingredients and two portions of the buttermilk. If you don't have buttermilk on hand, you can use one tablespoon of lemon juice and one cup of regular milk. Just combine and let it sit for about 15 minutes before you use it. Take the mixing bowl off the mixer and scrape the sides of the bowl to make sure nothing is stuck.
make sure you also scrape the beater or whisk that you use. I'm going to prepare the cake pans for baking. Ideally, this would have been done ahead of time, but we have time now. I'm going to use some cake fleece as well as parchment paper on the bottom of the pans. These are 6 inch aluminum pans. I'm going to grease the bottom and sides of the pan and then put the parchment paper circle on the bottom of the pan. Then I'm also going to grease the parchment paper as well. I don't want to take any chances that the cake will stick. Now that the cake pans are ready, I'm going to add baking soda and vinegar to the batter. Combine the baking soda and vinegar separately in a small container. After it fizzes, add to the red velvet batter. Gently stir to combine. I want even cake layers and in order to do that, I need to put in the same amount of batter in each pan. So I'm going to weigh out the entire batter. Then I'm going to divide that weight by 4 and put that amount of batter into each cake pan. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it should be relatively the same amount of batter. I'm using an ice cream scoop here because it helps to keep the edges clean. You can use whatever you like. I'm going to bake these in a preheated oven and rotate the pan halfway through baking. You know when the cake is done, when a toothpick comes out with a little bit of crumb stuck to it. Now that the cakes are baked, I'm going to set them on a rack to cool for about 10 minutes. Then I'm going to gently use a knife and a small baking sheet to get the layers out of the pans. If you try to take the cakes out of the pan too soon, the cakes can be too fragile and crumble. However, if you leave them in for too long, the butter may solidify in the fridge or freezer and it can be difficult to remove them from the pan. Make sure you remove the parchment circles from the bottom of the cake layers. 
I'm using the small baking sheet to help keep the cake layers from breaking as I remove them from the pan. The cake layers will still be warm at this point. You can wait until the cake layer is cool to remove the dome off the top, or you can choose it to do it before. I'm going to remove the dome before I pull the cake layers. I'm using a serrated knife to carefully slice off the rounded top of the cake layer. It doesn't have to be perfect, but try to make them as level as you can. That way it's easier when you're assembling the layer cake. Also be careful here because serrated knives are pretty sharp. Go slow and take as long as you need to get good layers. I like to save the scraps to make cake balls or just for snacks. I want the layers to cool completely before I frost them, so I'm going to stick these in the freezer for about 10 to 15 minutes. While the cake layers are cooling, I'm going to make the cream cheese frosting. I'm going to sift the powdered sugar, because if you don't, the frosting will have little lumps in it. This is really important, but kind of annoying step. I highly recommend you do it. You can use a flour sifter or a strainer like I'm doing. Make sure that the cream cheese and butter are all at room temperature. If your cream cheese is straight out of the fridge, you can microwave it out of the package for 15 to 30 seconds at a time until it's softened. Add the softened cream cheese and butter to a mixer bowl with paddle attachment. Beat until the mixture is combined and smooth. You may need to scrape the bowl a few times. After that, add the powdered sugar one scoop at a time with the mixer on low speed. You don't want the sugar to fly everywhere. vanilla extract to make it super tasty. If you don't like things very sweet, you can add a pinch of salt to balance out the sweetness. Once you've added all the sugar, beat the frosting until it is well combined and smooth. The more air you whip into this frosting, the lighter it will be. I'm going to assemble the cake layers now. I put a little frosting on the cake board to glue the bottom layer on. If you don't do this step, the cake can slide right off. layer of cream cheese frosting and slowly push out from the center. Try not to touch the actual cake layer because you'll get crumbs on your frosting.
continue this with each cake layer, spreading frosting and then topping it with another cake layer until you have four layers of cake with frosting in between. Now this is done, you can do the crumb coating. The crumb coating is just to hold all the crumbs in place before you put in a final layer of frosting for decoration. This makes sure that you don't have any stray crumbs on the outside of your cake. I'm using a cake table here, but you can also put it on a plate and turn it manually. Once this is done, I like to put this cake in the freezer for about 10 to 15 minutes again so that the frosting solidifies and the cake is easier to frost without sliding off. For the outside layer, I'm going to put the cream cheese frosting into a bag and pipe lines around the cake. This makes it a little easier to get even layer. I'm using a round, large piping tip. After I pipe the frosting onto the sides and on top of the cake, I'm going to smooth it out with a small offset spatula. Take your time here and make sure to go slow and gently. Fast movements can make your cake lean to one side or the other. You want to watch out for air bubbles and make sure that you fill in any gaps in the frosting. Once the initial layer is on, I like to take a plastic scraping tool to get the sides as smooth as possible. This particular cake design does not need to be super smooth, but I like to get it as close as I can. I'm going to move the cake from the turntable to the final cake board for presentation. You notice that the bottom here is a little bit messy. To fix that, I'm going to use some parchment strips to line the cake. I'm putting these between the cake and the cake. so that I can frost it and cleanly remove the strips. After that, I'm going to use little bits of frosting to fill in the gaps and make sure the bottom is a little bit more neat. This green tool I'm using is called a Japanese spatula and it has silicone sides, which can be easier to maneuver around this cake. Now 
Once that's done, I'm taking a triangular cake tool that has ridges in it. This tool lets you make designs on cakes. I'm going to use it to make lines on the top and sides of my cake. For the final dollops on top of the cake, I'm going to use a large star piping tip. And pipe rosette style dollops onto the top of the cake. Obviously, you can do whatever you like here. I'm going for a festive birthday vibe. So on top of these dollops, I'm going to add a lot of sprinkles. I'm going to get the top of the cake as well as the bottom. I'm just throwing sprinkles all over my kitchen, but that's okay. It's a lot of fun. We're done.